April 11, 1934, Ghent, a small but bustling city in the center of Belgium. During the relative peace of the interbellum, a dutiful sexton is taking his usual early morning stroll to work. Eager to get his daily routine started in maintaining the locally famed St. Bavo Cathedral, he heads inside. He quickly scans the main ornamental hall, while making his way forward to the cathedral's most famous attraction, but is stopped in his tracks, getting the distressing feeling that something isn't quite right. Upon further inspection, the sexton's fears prove reality, as he notices a large panel of a centuries-old piece of art is missing. In order to arrive at the notorious theft of this piece of art, it might be prudent to first look at how it made its way to that fateful heist on that fateful day. The Just Judges is only one piece of a much grander, religiously inspired work of art called The Adoration of the Mystic Lamb, or Het Lam Gods in Dutch, a so-called polyptic consisting, in this case, of 12 separate pieces, painted back and front and made to function as a piece of worship. Its design also lent itself to be folded up and stored away relatively easy. This grandiose piece of art was first commissioned by prominent businessman and local politician Johannes Vat from Ghent. The commission was eventually accepted by Hubert van Eyck, considered one of the founding fathers of the Flemish Primitives movement. Later in 1426, after work on the piece of art had commenced, Hubert met his untimely demise. Little else is known about the circumstances surrounding his death. As luck would have it though, he had an equally talented younger brother called Jan van Eyck, who finished the painting years later, in 1432. A lot of mystery surrounds the life of these two brothers, which might be a good subject to explore in a future video. After the artwork's completion, it was displayed in the personal chapel of prominent Gentish couple Elisabeth Borlut and Johannes Vat, the man who had originally commissioned it. Two figures on the outside panels are also said to be made in their likeness. From there, the Ghent altarpiece, and by extension the panel of the Just Judges, begins its tumultuous journey through time. More recently described by art historian Noah Charney as one of the more coveted and desired pieces of art, the victim of 13 crimes since its installation and 7 thefts, it survived several wars, battles and revolutions, and had several express round trips throughout Europe before ending up back on Belgian soil, in its rightful place, in 1934. After the local sexton discovered a rather large portion of his hometown's most beloved piece of art was stolen, he notified the local authorities straight away. Upon further investigation, it turns out two full panels back and front had been taken. The just judges, as well as Johannes the Baptist, are no longer adorning the bottom left corner of the once whole altarpiece. Detectives also spot a small note attached to the frame. It reads, Taken from Germany by the Treaty of Versailles. The cryptic text and complete lack of fingerprints didn't help them find the culprit, and although the brazen theft made front-page news throughout Belgium and beyond, the initial investigation hit a dead stop. Nearly 20 days later, on April 30, 1934, the Bishop of Ghent, Joseph Coppetiers, 
receives a strange, threatening letter in which the presumed thief asks for a ransom of one million Belgian francs. If their demands are not met, they vow to destroy the stolen panels. The letter is signed D.U.A. While the bishop is initially willing to pay the ransom in exchange for the safe return of the paintings, he is stopped in doing so by the then Belgian Minister of Justice, Paul Emile Janssen. Bishop Coppetiers, unwilling to give up so easily, continues communication efforts with DUA. The thief eventually decides to show a sign of goodwill by sending over a receipt for a baggage depot in the train station, Brussels North. Upon handing in the receipt, a train station employee hands over a large rectangular package, which turns out to be one of the two stolen panels, the one portraying John the Baptist. Upon questioning the relevant employees, the police gets a basic description of our art thief. A man around 50 years old, with a pointy beard. Some days later, yet another letter arrives. In it, another call for ransom in exchange for the remaining panel of the just judges. This time, however, a middleman is assigned by the letter writer. A pastor from Antwerp called Henri Meulopas is named as the person who should hand over the ransom. The Antwerp pastor is handed over a package containing the ransom, or at least part of it. Instead of the demand at 1 million francs, only 25,000 is present. Some days later, a taxi driver shows up at the pastor's doorstep and hands him a note. The pastor is instructed by the note to hand over a package to the driver, and does so. The man quietly accepts and calmly drives off. It soon becomes apparent that a now frustrated DUA is not happy with the financial shortcomings. A relatively long exchange of several letters between him and the police follows, but abruptly ends on the 1st of October. Our first clue about the possible whereabouts of the now notorious piece of art comes only a short six weeks after the last piece of communication from the thief. A political rally near Ghent is disrupted rather abruptly, when a local bank manager, a well-respected man by all accounts, succumbs to a heart attack after delivering a speech. The 57-year-old Arsène Goudertier, who used to be a sexton, is transported to his brother's house, where he dies not long after. As is the case in many mysteries, this one too involves a deathbed confession. Arsène tells his lawyer that he is the only one with any knowledge of the just judge's whereabouts. With his dying breath, he utters the words, In my desk, key, cupboard, Folder Mutualité After searching a folder labeled Mutualité, present in his desk, his lawyer finds copies of 13 of the extortion letters sent to bishops and the police. No trace of the just judges. Whether or not Mr. Goodertier was actually involved with the crime, or he only obtained the letters because of his former connections with the Bisdom of Ghent, is never conclusively proven one way or the other. One of the more out there theories involves the man who was eventually commissioned with producing a copy of the stolen artwork to display and make the polyptych whole again. Because of the craftsmanship and stunning similarity to the original, Jeff van der Weken found himself briefly in hot water after he was accused of either having access to the original or even painting over it and passing it off as a copy. Of course, after a brief investigation, none of these allegations proved to be substantial. During the decades between the theft and now, several private sleuths and armchair detectives have brought forth their own theories, some of them more credible than others. A few local municipalities have even acted on such tips, 
drilling the pavement or searching houses of possible suspects, until we get another substantial deathbed confession or someone with connections to the original thieves comes forward. The true location of the just judges will remain simply a mystery. Thank you for watching this episode of Simply Mystery and for sticking around till the end of the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down below in the comments.